Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how you can get better frame rates. Now the first couple things I'm going to show you are settings in Windows that you're going to want to change or adjust. These are definite things and the next after that we're, I'm not necessarily going to show you settings but more of a methodology on how to find out what's best for your system. It is important to remember as I've stated in the past that you can have two identically built systems, the exact same hardware and and have two completely different performances. Um, there's there's so much more that goes into it than just I have this hardware on this simulator. Um, it just doesn't work like that. It's not that simple. So you need to understand how to find what's best for your setup. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to guide us over to our installation directory. So you should see something like this, wherever you have it installed, you'll find a Windows app folder, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you're going to come down here and find the Flight Simulator EXE. By the way, make sure the game is not running when you do this. You're going to right click, you're going to go to properties. You're going to come down here to compatibility. You're going to make sure disable full screen optimizations is checked. Um, dis full screen optimizations is something that Microsoft tried to do to enhance the performance of full screen applications it failed miserably okay um, this is probably actually one of the biggest causes to micro stuttering the next one is this um, override high dpi scaling behavior uh, scaling performed by you want to check it and make sure the application takes control of it what this does is prevents microsoft from actually adjusting the scaling and manipulating it outside of the sims control which again can cause fps loss and stuttering okay so make sure both of those are checked then hit apply hit okay and we're done there now, FYI, you may run into a permissions issue trying to access this folder or that directory. If you do, I highly suggest go on YouTube and, you know, just Google, you know, um, permissions accessing you, uh, folders or permission denied when trying to access a folder on my computer, and you'll find a bunch of tutorials on how to adjust it. Um, it, it can be quite a tedious process, um, so I don't want to go into that today. But uh, if you do run into that, there are options to, to show you how to adjust that, okay? Um, don't let it freak you out. Don't think that you're out of control. You can absolutely fix it. Just go step by step with one of your tutorials. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Next thing is if we go to our start menu, let me bring it over here, and we just start typing game mode. Okay. You're going to come in here to the game mode settings, and you want to disable it. Um, a lot of people will say you leave it on. You don't want to leave it on. Game mode does not work. And when I say does not work, I just mean that in general. Okay, there were it, if it hurts more applications than it helps. The idea behind it is what it's supposed to do is assign a higher priority to the CPU processes um, when it detects that a game or simulator in this case is active. Okay, but it doesn't work 99% of the time and it works poorly. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do it manually in a minute here. Uh, next thing, also captures. You want to make sure your background capture, background recording is disabled. It is doing exactly what it says it's doing if game mode is also enabled. Um, or if game bar, excuse me, is enabled. Um, so we want to make sure that you come in here and just forcibly uncheck background recording. And it does the same thing like NVIDIA Shadow Play does where, you know, you can come back and check the last few minutes or, you know, in this case, the last couple of hours, I think, by default. Um, and you don't want it doing that. It's obviously taking up some horsepower. Okay, which obviously brings us up to game bar. You also want to disable the game bar as well. Okay. Um, these are all things that are running in the background that can absolutely impact frame rate and overall performance. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. And I'm going to show you guys how to manually set your CPU priority for this. So we're going to bring up our task bar again. Okay, I just hit the Windows key in this case. We're going to right click the task bar and go to task manager. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to details and you're going to find flight simulator exe. You're going to right click it and you're going to set priority and you want to set it to high. Do not set it to real time. You will have a horrible experience if you do that. Okay, but you want to set it to high. Um, and again, what this does is it sets the priority um, of the flight simulator process with the CPU. So it doesn't put a whole bunch of things on top of it, therefore slowing it down. Okay. Um, it tells the CPU, I want you to focus on this, give me all you can for this process, okay? And you can close it. Now, the thing about setting the priority to remember is you must do that every time you start the sim. And you must start the sim first, then bring up the task manager, then go to details, then set your priority. And you have to do it every single time you start the sim. Once you close it, that's it. It doesn't remember it for next time. 
two other settings that I want you guys to make sure you're working with at least for NVIDIA users is right click on your desktop you should get a item that says NVIDIA control panel okay when you bring up your NVIDIA control panel now you can either come into program settings and find the application that you want to use um, typically if it's the last one that was used it will typically show up here um, so you can see that I was in all these Microsoft Flight Simulator for example okay and we can hit add oops we already found it we don't need to hit add sorry disregard that we're gonna select Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to make sure um, gamma correction um, this is up to you guys I have found minimal impact but gained a couple of frames but nothing crazy by turning it off anti-aliasing make sure it's application controlled okay um, again because of what anti-aliasing can do and how much of a pain it can be these two are critical um, power management make sure it says prefer maximum performance and then also with second get hit apply and then we wait for it and then texture uh, filtering also make sure it says hyper or high performance um, these are just recommendations if you guys disagree with these by all means um, for example texture filtering use global setting we can actually leave that for now I might play around with some of these later so I'm gonna leave it at that but definitely those two to start make sure this texture filtering quality is set to high performance and make sure power management is set for maximum performance then hit apply and then you guys are good to go for now I will I'm gonna do some more testing with Nvidia control panel and I'll get back to you on the rest of it so I'm gonna stop the video or stop the settings tutorial of this right now all right let's get moving on all right so next thing is I'm gonna show you guys how to bring up the frame rate counter for Microsoft Flight Simulator now um, I already put a comment in there but um, you know who I'm talking to when I say it to you sir um, I owe you an apology you were absolutely right I was not getting 71 frames per second on ultra in a 4k monitor um, and truth be told as I put in the comment the numbers were surprising me as well even I thought they were like wow those are really high for what I have but what the hell I was willing to go with it right um, <clears throat> I had never seen numbers like that before, but then again, that was the first time I'd looked. I finally figured out what happened because after our conversation, I couldn't reproduce it. So until I finally reproduced the bug yesterday. So what happened was I had in video shadow play. I was using their frame rate counter, which is why I'm not anymore. And what happened is at some point I clicked over to an application that was on another monitor and in video shadow play, uh, frame rate per second started tracking it. And then when I clicked back into the simulator, it never switched back. It kept tracking that other application. So now we're using the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator's own FPS counter. Okay, and the other thing that we can do here, um, or excuse me, the other thing, the thing I'm going to show you guys is, is how to set this up. You're going to come here to Options. You're going to go to General. You're going to come all the way down to Developers, and you're going to turn this Developer Mode on. Now, you can do this at any time. You don't have to be in the hangar. You can be out flying around um, and activate this, okay? Then what you would do is go here to uh, go up here to options and click um, display FPS, okay? And that will give you the FPS count. And the only number you're concerned with here is this guy right up here, okay? You don't have to dive into all the rest of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so with all that set out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look into how to go about diagnosing your uh, frame rates, how to get the best frame rate for you. So to do that, let's go ahead and set up a, a quick flight here. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick Phoenix Sky Harbor as I did previously. Um, it's a little bit, it's significantly bigger than Tucson, Arizona, where my hometown is. Um, and so it's going to require a bit more, a bit more load to get around. Now let's go ahead and actually start in the air. We'll start over at Tempe. Okay. Okay, so now we're in the sim, we're flying around, we're in Phoenix Sky Harbor, um, and we're averaging about 40 frames per second. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is expectation. Set your goals realistically, okay? Even with a 2080 Ti, and this is again why I was shocked with my FPS before, um, 2080 Ti on a 4K monitor, ultra resolution, or ultra settings, I'm not going to get 60 frames per second. 
But the thing to remember about 60 frames per second, everybody's always so bent on 60 frames, 60 frames, gotta have 60 frames. It depends what you're doing. This is a flight simulator, general flight simulator. This isn't even a dog fighting simulator. No, something like DCS World, yeah, you need those frames per second because you're moving fast through the terrain. You're constantly doing banks. You're dog fighting. You're looking around really rapidly. There's so much going on, right? In a sim like this, you don't need that kind of frames per second. You could really get by comfortably, comfortably at 30 frames per second, and you're not going to notice much of a difference. Okay, you're truly not. Um, even between 30 and 60 on a simulator like this, you're not going to notice a ton of difference. You might notice a little bit smoother, but I mean, guys, I got to tell you, you know, you might be seeing some stuttering here, but that's, I guarantee that's the recording. It's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very smooth picture. I can move my head anywhere I want, switch cameras very rapidly, peek around, and it's just smooth as glass. Um, and that's down in the 40s. Now, so that's step one. Set your goals realistically. Now, if you have a 2080 Ti, you're rocking the NVMe, you've got a good processor, and you're doing 1080p, yeah, you're probably going to blow 60 frames per second out of the water. I haven't tried it on 1080p, but I guarantee if I were to set my resolution to 1080p, I would shatter this 40 frames per second. Okay, but I don't want to run on 1080p, I want to run on 4K. And so some of this is going to apply to higher resolution monitors, what I'm about to go through, my methodology here, and some of it's going to apply to lower end monitors. And when I say lower end, I just mean lower resolution, not, not lower quality. Okay, nobody get all chapped at me for saying that. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So um, first thing that I want you guys to be aware of right off the bat, there is one major, absolutely of everything that's on this list, one major killer of frame rates. Okay, um, and by the way, this is through extensive testing. I've, I've been going through every single one of these um, and testing the crap out of it. And it's this guy right here. Volumetric clouds crush FPS. Um, I have seen it all the way from an impact. So if we were to go to ultra, I have seen the impact be anywhere from t 10 up to 33 frames per second was the impact on ultra okay um, so yes it does depend on where you are what the cloud density is you know what kind of what the air and or what the weather is like but I can tell you right now if you have any clouds in the area any any at all and volumetric clouds are set to ultra you are crushing your FPS by any like I said well I'm not crushing it but you, potentially you are um, but you could be losing anywhere from 5 up to 30 frames per second with ultra uh, volumetric clouds so truly dive in decide how much are the clouds really worth to you okay um, then um, now we I want to get into the methodology I recommend doing what I did and what I did was I literally set everything to absolutely the lowest possible setting okay and worked my way up now when I say work my way up I'm gonna give you guys a couple of tips on where to begin okay start with your terrain level of detail and objects level of detail okay first establish you know your picture you want to have a good picture okay um, then also make sure anti-aliasing leave it on TAA do not take this away for any cost because every other version of anti-aliasing that's available looks like absolute dog crap okay it's just terrible it, it's not even worth it to fight with all the other settings if you don't have the TAA on the nice thing about TAA is that you can skip out on some of the other texturing methods depending on your resolution so for example anisotropic filtering texture sampling super sampling if you guys notice I have them turned off okay and if we go back into the sim for a second look at your corners look at the edges look at your shadows reflections look at the buildings take a look at the roads terrain down below look at the window frame look at the yoke edges is what you're looking at okay it looks great okay and so for your higher resolution monitors 1440 probably will have the same result but definitely 4k monitors don't worry about you know the the super sampling and your anti anisotropic filtering because you're running such a high enough resolution where you're not going to see those jaggies near as often if you really find yourself noticing a bunch, then you can try, you know, mess with anisotropic filtering first, as it's going to have the lesser of the two impacts. And I wouldn't go above 8x, okay? Um, the difference between 8 and 16x, now you're still only talking 2 or 3 frames lost tops, right? It's a very low end, or I should say lightweight process. 
but um, it depends on on how how much those two or three frames mean to you okay but um, so between 8 and 16 X it's, it's not worth the jump so don't go to 16 X your cost to performance or co cost to quality improvement is is minimal at that point okay but so for 4k resolution monitors um, and maybe 1440 you guys might want to check it out and hell even 1080p decide for yourself uh, maybe it's not as bad as, as I would think it is I don't know I haven't ran 1080p in a long time um, but um, you know turn those off first establish your picture first and then start messing with super sampling and filtering okay so that's the first step leave these two guys definitely um, for last okay and actually that's not meant to be off so give me a second here oops there we go set those to ultra and the other thing I'm gonna show you guys here real quick so you saw I just set both of those to ultra that was trees and grass and bushes okay we're in general aviation notice the frame rate counter impact impact was minimal and you're gonna find that's the case for almost all of the settings that are within the graphics okay almost all of the graphics settings the impact is very minimal it's very light okay one to two frames now one to two frames 28 times yeah you're you're gonna start to notice that impact and again I'm running the 2080 Ti so obviously that again that that's going to come into consideration at this point um, but so work your way up slowly and this is this is why I recommend this no matter what your computer program is or, no, or what your um, hardware is even if you're running low lower end hardware start at low and work your way up but follow these these tips um, shadow maps and terrain shadows I would also kick those down to the lowest and work your way up after you've established everything else and the only other two things that I will say that that applies to is your bloom and light shafts um, I've turned them off as well if we click them back on go apply save okay we can see that we lost about three frames per second okay and you know I'm, I'm going by average that's why I always make sure to turn every time I make a change I turn I look around I make sure to get the entire image I look down the cockpit see what it's doing look up in the sky see where where the frames are going to be on, on a high level and that's the thing too if you just look up look, notice the frame rates and the reason why I'm telling you to do that is you're going to get similar to that when you're up at high altitude if you're an airline pilot okay if you're high if you if you enjoy flying the airliners that's that's one way that you can sort of get an idea now it's going to be a little bit less still okay because you are still going to see the terrain but um, it won't be as bad and the other thing guys keep in mind that I'm at you need to add about five to seven frames per second here um, because I am recording on the same machine and it does take an impact I lose about f anywhere between five and eight ten depending on the area when I'm recording okay so um, that's that's the other plus there so I'm actually getting a few more than what you're seeing there on screen um, now let's go ahead and go back into it here for a second and just sort of tick take out anything that I think is is a major pointer or, or point of contention when when working with the um, graphics um, generic um, AI traffic um, I've turned both of these to off S same with that one off I have not noticed a significant impact with these lens flare lens correction no major impact depth of field on ultra yes I have seen an impact so if we kick it up on ultra but I want you guys to do me a favor so again we lost about one or two frames consistently okay we're coming into sort of a, a lighter area so we want to wait let me turn the aircraft back around make sure that we have plenty that's out there right start heading towards downtown Phoenix here let some more of the terrain render in Okay, so, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Notice depth of field is on ultra. Now, the idea behind depth of field is supposed to give you blurriness on your edges and things at distance. Okay, it's, it's to help create that illusion of distance and motion. Now, you guys see it as it is right now. This is it on ultra. We lost a few frames from this, guys. Um, now, it's loading in the next terrain tile. Um, I haven't flown this far out in Phoenix, so that's all it's doing right now. So don't worry about that. It'll stabilize in a minute. Um, but if we come back here, and I set this to off, like I had, 
and maybe you guys can see it, maybe I'm just mental or something, but I don't see enough of a difference. The, the mountains out in the background still look fuzzy at a distance. They're not quite as fuzzy, but like definitely out over there, you know, things still look like they're at a distance. Um, I, I don't really see any change that would make me say, you know, yeah, th this is absolutely worth it. Now, that may very well be a setting that shines at higher altitude. Um, so again, make sure you guys test these for yourself and ask yourself, what is the difference? Okay. So I'm going to wrap this up with uh, a couple final thoughts here real quick. I don't want to take up all you guys' time just going around setting by setting. I'm going to recap a little bit. So first, come in here, change this from custom or whatever it's set to, and set it all the way to low end. No matter what your resolution is set to, no matter what your hardware is, start at low end. VSync, make sure it is turned off. VSync does not work for crap in MSFS 2020 right now. Um, what you will find is it fluctuates A very, very badly. It's very poorly optimized. Um, and on average, what you'll get is about half of whatever you set it to. For those of you who don't understand, what VSync does is it prevents the game or simulator, whatever you're running, um, from exceeding the monitor's capable frames per second. So if you have a 60 hertz monitor, you cap out at 60 frames per second. And you don't, if, you, if frames go too far above what your monitor can handle, you get what's called uh, screen tearing. And if you want to know more about that, you know, you can just go to YouTube or, or Google and, and Google what screen tearing is. Um, but it's just distortion that pops up on the screen when the frame rate gets too high above what the monitor is capable of. Okay, um, render scaling, don't touch it. Um, absolutely crushes, crushes you. Um, so leave it what, at what it is unless you absolutely need, need to. Anti-aliasing, leave it at TAA. Set everything to low. Start with terrain level of detail, objects level of detail. Okay, work them into 100. I will say that bringing them down had very minimal impact. Bringing them above 100 had huge impact. Okay, uh, obviously negatively, right? Negatively affecting our frame rate. Um, working our way down um, I would these two are completely preference I can tell you right now that at least again for me oh, sorry about that for me the impact was negligible but um, bloom would be my next concern light shafts um, again and ambient occlusion ambient occlusion I would say was a four to five frame hit um, and then your shadow maps your shadow maps bring these up one at a time um, and test and fly around buildings. Make sure that you have the time of day um, in a position that it is um, actually casting shadows on the ground. Okay, so if you're like, if you fly around at high noon, you know, where the sun's directly above, you're not going to really see what that impact's going to be because the, the shadows are very small. You know, they're, they're casting directly on top of the buildings um, and trees and et cetera. So make sure that you, you know, you use like 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon or maybe between like 9 and 10.30 in the morning, somewhere around there, where, wherever the, the sun is at a good 40, you know, to 45 degree angle against the terrain. Um and then contact shadows, just so in case you guys don't understand what this is. These are primarily where two units um, join together. Okay, uh, example of a contact shadow. Let's see here. Um, this would be an example of a contact shadow where two units pieces join together right here. There you go. There's a good one. Okay, you can see that darkened area where the two pieces join. That's a contact shadow. Uh, right here on the wing, you know, where the, the strut meets the wing. Right here where the you know hopefully you guys catch the gist okay so those are gonna be your contact shadows and they're huge that they, they they give definition to objects they they give you your outline contact shadows are a big part of where we get our detail from that we go ooh and ah right um so but take it slowly um work with the terrain first and work your way into the cockpit the biggest thing to remember as i've stated before in the previous video the the hardest thing for any simulator or application game of any kind to render is not the object directly in front of you it's actually the environment okay whether that be terrain a building you know explosions things like that going around that's what makes it difficult um for machines to render um, most of this stuff I found to be negligible impact. Again, with the anisotropic filtering, texture super sampling, do everything else first and then do these two and try to clean up your image if you feel it's necessary. Okay. Um, I will say these two um, above volumetric clouds and volumetric clouds, honestly, I do okay on medium or high. And ultra was, ultra was pretty bad though. Ultra took me down into the 20s on a rainy day. 
Um, so um, it, it definitely crushes it, but um, you know, medium I do just fine on. Um, traffic, I didn't see any impact here. Okay, whether it was real time, online, uh, ground traffic density, airport vehicle density, I didn't see any impact as far as frames per second. Um, I turned this one down just because I think it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've been taxiing down a taxiway and a semi truck appears in front of me. It's like, really? Um, so that's that's totally uh, up to you guys. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Um, but uh, as far as everything else goes, guys, it was all negligible. Just, just absolutely negligible. I would say, as a whole, the simulator is actually fairly optimized. I was actually fairly impressed on how many of these settings had little to no impact. Okay, um, now, again, every experience is different, which is why I am not giving you guys direct settings. Please don't copy my settings, guys, I'm telling you, because you could very easily have the exact same build I do and get better performance than me. Take the time. It took me about three hours of doing this. Yes, it was a pain in the rear. Yes, I hated it. I went to Alaska. I was in Phoenix. I was in Los Angeles. I was in New York. Um, I went down to the bush areas. You know, I, I tested the different sceneries to find my balance because that's the other thing is one setting may be great. For example, in Tucson, we'll see this at, at 50 frames per second, okay, because it's not near as dense as Phoenix is. Okay, so I gain quite a bit of FPS based on where I'm flying. So you need to find that balance. Take the time, figure it out. If you guys need any help, or have any questions, you know, maybe you know, need a couple of good areas to, to try to practice this, by all means, let me know. Ask the community. Ask the guys down below in the comments. You know, I'm sure the guys and gals here on this channel have, so far have been phenomenal. Everyone seems real helpful and kind. Um, but uh, let us know what you need, and we're here to help you. But um, Please don't copy other people's settings. Do the work. You'll, 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 a, you'll get a better understanding of what everything's doing. You get a better understanding of what the settings uh, actually bring you. And you'll find what works best for your system in its current configuration. And I think you'll be much happier with the results after you're done. Okay? So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope that you find this useful. Um, I know it was a little bit of a ramble, but uh, I, I didn't want to give you guys settings. I wanted to give you guys a methodology to, to, you know, how to figure this stuff out without driving yourself crazy and, and seeing how uh, frames are great for someone else, but they, you know, are terrible for yours. And, you know, I know how that feels and drives you crazy. And it's because, you know, we don't do the work, the leg work that's required for our system. So anyway, enough lecture for me. I hope you guys are all well and safe. I hope you're still enjoying flying around and I hope to see you guys out there. Take it easy, guys. Bye bye.